Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis 47. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh, and said, My father, and my brethren, and their flocks, and their herds, and all that they have are come out of the land of Cana, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. Now, Goshen is on the eastern side of the delta of Nile. It's also called, uh, we're going to see in verse 11, the land of Ramses. And like my wife said the other day, they're separated from the Egyptians. They're in another community. You got a Egyptian, oh, I'm trying to think what they used to call it when I grew up in the void, neighborhood, and they got a Jewish neighborhood in the Bible. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and we don't know which one, five of his brothers. <clears throat> Remember, all but Benjamin were the ones that, you know, sold Joseph out. I would assume that one of them would be Reuben. But it doesn't say. And presented them to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. Now verse 34 of the previous chapter, he tells them, he says, Listen, don't say you're, you're herdsmen, you're cattlemen. Don't tell them you're shepherds because it's an abomination to the Egyptians. Now, I guarantee this moment here with the sons of Jacob, Jacob has taught his boys, you better tell the truth, and you better not lie. Because Jacob remembers one time that his father said, Art thou Esau? Yes, I'm Esau. And it's brought much reaping and sowing. I believe Jacob's trying to talk his boys right. Joseph says, tell a half truth. It's not a lie, but it's true. You do take care of cattle, but you also take care of shepherds. I mean, you take care of sheep and your shepherds. Well, you know what Pharaoh needs? You know what the ruler of a nation needs? He needs a shepherd to stand up and tell the truth. No matter who in the government says, you know, Get in there and preach the truth. Listen, that's what Nathan did to David. Thou art the man. David didn't need a yes man. We and also our fathers, Isaac and Abraham, they also moreover, they said moreover unto Pharaoh, For the sojourn in the land are we come. For thy servants have no pasture for our flocks. For the famine is sore in the land of Cana. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servant dwell in the land of Goshen. And it's kind of weird because Joseph told his brothers, come here, I'll take care of you. The famine is yet, I forget how many years still. Pharaoh tells Joseph, bring your father, bring your brethren, here's the wagons, bring them. Joseph is like, I'm going to go see, I mean, Jacob is, is saying, I'm going to go see my son, my long lost son. The sons are saying, you know what, that land we just left was not able to, to take care of us. The famine is so sore. So, and Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, thy father... And thy brethren are come unto thee. Here they are. They're, they're here. I acknowledge it. Making notes in my Bible. 
Mark your Bible, Jeremiah says, so I do. And the land of Egypt is before thee. Whoa! How come Pharaoh is not minding the abominations? How come he is taking this one group of people and he say, you know what, come here. You're welcome. He could have. And then what God told Abraham, Abraham has brought on Isaac, and Isaac has brought on Jacob is, I will bless them that bless thee, and Pharaoh's being blessed. This is no ordinary Pharaoh. Now the Pharaoh in Egypt's word, I'm the God, I'm the king. And here he's, we read in verse 34 that shepherds are an abomination. Not to this Pharaoh he's not. I'll tell you, Jacob has been faithful. He's been faithful in Potiphar's house. He's been faithful in prison. And Joseph. And he's being faithful in Pharaoh's house. Do you know another man in the Bible outside of Jesus Christ who's been that just as faithful? Paul. Paul is going before kings and princes and queens. And he is faithful to the word of God. And the lands of Egypt is before thee, in the best of the land, make thy father and brethren go. But not really the best of the land, because it's not growing. But once the famine's gone, it's going to be the best of the land. You're in the Nile Delta. That is fertile, if it's not flooded. But once it's not flooded, the Nile River is their resources, and it's a god to the Egyptians because it produces fish, reeds. It's a crop. It's export. In the land of Goshen, let them dwell. And if thou knowest any men of activity among them, that then make that yeah, try that. Men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. Joseph, yes, sir. Anybody like your like you among your family? You put them as my cattlemen. You put them in charge of my. What, what about the Egyptians that would be in charge of them? You're going to have Jewish men in charge over Egyptians in Pharaoh's home. The ones that you imagine walking up. Well, who are you guys? Well, we're, the, we're the brothers of Joseph. The shepherds? Yeah, we don't stand shepherds. Well, that's okay because we got I got this ID, I got this, this paper, I got whatever it is to show that I am now in charge of these cows. Oh. Gee, what, what is Pharaoh doing to this nation? We got to impeach him because he's letting these people do this. Oh, my, we never had such a Pharaoh like this a whole lot of time. We got to get rid of him. That's what America would cry. So Joseph has been so faithful that your brothers are going to be like you. How are we doing, Christians, as living? How are we doing? How are we doing professing Christians? Hmm? And Joseph, you know, the, the one of the worst people... As my studies, and I, I, I've done the Institute studies of the Bible, one of the things, two of the things I've heard from three different men, as far as warnings of going into the ministry, watch your business conduct with other Christians because they'll do you wrong. Now, isn't that a great thing for a minister of a, of a, of an instructor to a student of the Bible that you got to watch out for other Christians? And it's true. I've seen it. And Joseph brought in Jacob. Now here's his father. His father. And set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. You got the age going before the king and say, you know, blessed him. Pharaoh has been blessed by Abraham, Isaac, Jacob for taking care of the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isn't that remarkable? 
And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrims are a hundred and thirty years. Wow, he's 130 years old. And the guy just walked and got an animal from Cana to Egypt. And evil have the days of my life, the day, uh, I don't know. evil have the days of the years of my life been, and have not attended unto the days of the years of life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. So Pharaoh gets a double blessing. I will bless them that bless you. What did Jacob do? He doubled bless Pharaoh. Genesis chapter 12, but verses 3 or 4. You just saw a nation get blessed because they're helping those Jews. So what we're seeing right now, we're seeing a sheep nation that is taking care of the Jew during trials and tribulations such as a famine. Now let me ask you a question. Did Pharaoh know what he was doing? So what did Jesus say? You, you fed me, you, you prisoned me in prison, you, you, you gave me medicine, you, you comforted me. And what did they say? When did we visit you? When did we do this? When did, what are you talking about, Lord? We didn't do that when you took care of my brother. There it is. Here is a nation that is going to be judged and removed from the goats and allowed to go in the millennium. That's why on that thing I say Pharaoh has some kind of salvation with God. I'm going to assume that his name, when he gets judged at the great white throne judgment, I guarantee I would believe that his name will be there in that book and he won't go off in the lake of hell. And Joseph placed his father, his brethren, and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses. Again, that's Goshen. The best. Get this. As Pharaoh had commanded. Joseph is following orders by his boss. You give him the best. Kind of weird. These outsiders. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. So, you know, Joseph's in charge of the barns. He's in charge of the corn. Here, dad. Here, brothers. Here's my family. Eat. And there was no bread in all the land. For the famine was very sore. So that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. So it spread out. Jacob and his family would have died had not God sent Joseph into Egypt and J Joseph being faithful. And Joseph had no idea what he was doing. As we don't have any idea what God will do for us. If we allow ourselves to be used by God in normal everyday things. Joseph never had any great. One great thing was he had great sorrow. You know, they, they take off his coat and they throw him in a pit. They take him out, sell him for money. He ends up with the greatest job he has. And then he's blown by one woman. He's cast into prison. He's got a great position. He's called up before Pharaoh for a dream. And he finds himself at the top of the government. And then he finds he's, he's got his family back with him. And he, now he's taking care of his family. That mean, rotten Joseph has got dreams. Let's just take care of them and see what happens to dreams. They're all singing around the table. Let's thank the Lord and Joseph for this corn we're about to eat. I said, let's thank Joseph and the Lord. Let's thank Pharaoh and Joseph, God the Father, God the Son. Let's thank him for the bread. So Joseph is feeding his household. Do you know anywhere in the scriptures where Jesus fed his family? Where Jesus fed his, the, the people, the children of Israel? 
5,000, 4,000. There's Joseph taking care of. It's got to be. We read off the numbers last night. 66 and then 70 go with us. Not yeah, but how about the people of Israel? I mean, the people of Egypt. How many is he feeding? And Joseph gathered, gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt. So all the money's gone. Money's going to do you no good in a famine. Now, the first depression that America had, I said the first, because there'll be a second. There was no money, but there was food. The money's all gone. And the land of Cana. So Pharaoh has all the money of Egypt and Cana in his vaults. Which they bought. And Joseph brought the money under Pharaoh's house. Now unless it's those coins that you unfoil and you have fine chocolate. It's not going to do you no good. You're going to sit down and eat a coin. You can't eat a coin unless you grind it up very fine. Like Moses did with that, that sacred cow. And made the children drink of it. I don't think that's a good idea here. What'd you do with that, that, that nickel you had? <laughs> I drank it last night. No, that's not what you're going to do. The money's gone. All the money's gone. And when money failed in the land of Egypt, in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread. Why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. Here's your depression. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. Alright, so give me give me your livestock. The livestock is no good right now. There is no grain. There is no wheat. There's no barley. That's what the cows eat. You've got meat right here right now. Sirloin steaks. Hamburger meat. Pork if they had pigs. But it's not going to do no good if they're skinny. Remember Pharaoh's dream? You could count the ribs on these animals. They're, they're no good for food. They're lean and ill. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph. And Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for flocks, for cattle of the herd and for the asses. And he fed them with the bread for all their cattle for that year. You realize how much corn Joseph laid up? Pharaoh has all the money in his palace or whatever he calls his building. I don't know what they call it. Now Pharaoh takes a walk outside of his outside of his palace one day. He's like, "What is that smell? What is that I hear?" All around him, there's horses, there's pigs, there's cattle. They're all penned up. He walks over to Joseph and says, "What's going on here? They're all yours." For the people for corn, they're all yours. And the cattle are being brought jobs for the children of Israel. Because Pharaoh said that all the men of your family take care of those cattle. There's jobs in this depression. And they're given out by Joseph of his brethren. They're working for their corn. The Egyptians are paying. But the Israelites are working. Isn't that interesting? And when that year had ended, a year, just a year, that's it, a year, ended, they came unto him the second year. They said, we will not hide it from my Lord. How that our, our Lord, my Lord, you know, that's what they called Jesus, even though they didn't believe Jesus, that's what they called Jesus, Lord. Isn't that interesting? How that our money is spent. My Lord also has our inheritance of cattle. There is not left in the sight of my Lord, but our bodies and our lands. Now Job 2, 4, Satan says, I'm not going to quote rightly, but all that a man has he will give for his life. 
They have given up their money. They have given up their livestock. They have given up their utensils, and I mean the horses, the oxen, as tractors would be back then, as your pickup trucks, as your asses. Asses carry things. That would be your pickup. They're giving that all in. They're giving their cars. They're, they're pawning all their jewelry. And America's doing that today for their bills. They're training things in. They're giving things up. Wherefore, shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land, buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be thy servants unto Pharaoh, and give us seed, that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate, dead, no one around. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. Almost like a federal takeover of the land. But they sold themselves. There was a price. The federal government of the United States comes in and gives you squat. Eminent domain. The people come to Joseph hey, listen, buy our lands now, will you? We will trade our land. That's how bad, <coughs> excuse me, the famine is. They're, they can't grow a garden. Give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph brought all, bought all the land of Egypt from Pharaoh, for Pharaoh. For the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh's. The, land, the money's gone, the animals are gone, now the land is gone. When that great food depression comes, you're your stocks, your bonds, your your apartment complex, your big high-rise building, your executive building in Las Vegas, your, your houses, your everything that you own ain't going to do you no good. And there is a famine coming, the Bible says. Unless you receive that mark, definitely. That is 100% sure. Unless you receive that mark, you will not buy or sell. And it won't be Joseph giving to you. It will be the Antichrist. And with that, you'll damn your soul. At least there's mercy with Joseph. And as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt, even to the other end. Federal displacement of people. You better, you better study history, because what people fear and say, oh, that's one of them, oh, what do they call it? Conspiracy theories. Here's a conspiracy theory that happened in the book of Genesis. Joseph marched them off into displacement places. Joseph, a man that's right with God, took the people and moved them off. What do you think a man's going to do who's not right with God? Okay. Well, you see the United States government in here. Only the land of the priest bought he not. For the priests had a portion assigned to them of Pharaoh, and did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore, the, wherefore they sold not their land. Here is federal tax exempt status for the church. And these guys are not worshiping God. It's the only wrong I see Pharaoh doing. And these are the same gods that worship the sun disk and, and, and things that have round circles around their head and, and their queen of heaven and Isis and all that and their Easter god bunny and, you know, woman of fraternity and the alligator god and that. They got some weird looking gods. One looks like a wolf or dog or something. You know what Jesus said when it came to, to Christians and taxes? If it belongs to Caesar, give it to Caesar. Paul says, if it comes to taxes and tribute, pay that to the government. Peter says, if you got taxes or anything like that, you pay it. Peter, are we supposed to pay taxes here? Well, we kind of, uh, why don't you go down and go catch a fish, and inside that fish is tax money. You know what federal recognized tax exempt money does for your church and your community? It makes their property value and taxes higher 
If you don't pay taxes in your area, your county, your your town or, or your city, well, this piece of property is not being taxed and your neighbors are going to now pay more because you don't. Claire. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought, bought you this day and your land for so he buying the people and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. The famine's getting to the end. I'm gonna give you seed. And it shall come to pass in the increase. Famine's coming to the end. That ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, twenty percent. And four parts shall be your own. So Pharaoh gets one one part, you get four parts. When these seed grow, and your gardens grow, and your fields grow, one fourth of that part, the twenty percent, will be to you. You're going to divide it into five. And one fifth belongs to Pharaoh. You get the other four fifths. For seed of the field, and for your food, and for them of your household, and for your food, for your little ones. So you're coming back to a time that you're going to be able to feed your family. And they said, Thou hast saved our lives. Ooh, you don't underline that one. They're talking to Joseph, the greatest type of Jesus. Thou hast saved our lives. Ooh, I can say that. Jesus Christ saved my life and gave me eternal life. And Joseph was a gift of God because jo Joseph was sent by God. For God so loved the Israelites that he gave to Egypt Joseph to prevent the death of Jacob and his sons. I did not misquote scripture by there, by the way. And the Egyptians are saying, Joseph, you saved your life. I'm a Gentile, I can say Jesus, the Messiah of the Israelites, has saved my life. The wages of sin is death. Don't let us die, Joseph. Don't let us die, Joseph. Thou hast saved our lives. Let, it, let us find grace in thy sight of the Lord. Let us find grace. Let us find grace. That's great. One more. E. Amazing how much you miss when you're eating. Find sight of my Lord. Joseph, let us find grace in the sight of Jesus. And we will be Pharaoh's servants. I hope we that are saved that can say Jesus saved our soul. I hope we can say that we find grace in your sight and that we serve God. Hope we can say that. I I don't know if I can say it to the fools. I don't know how much of a servant I am to God. And Joseph made it law. Oh, Joseph. Come on, we're going to have a tea party, Joseph. Making laws. Taxing us, Joseph. You're mean and wicked, Joseph. How dare you tax us? That is not fair. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a meeting at the at the at the city hall. We're gonna meet at the town hall. We're gonna prevent Joseph from taxes. Every Christian involved in that mess doesn't know what the Bible says. Because a man that's working by God, that is of God, that's protecting the people and protecting the people of God, he applied taxes. And God said, I like that. You better stop your tax results because you're going against the Bible. And Joseph uh, made a law over the land of Egypt unto this day that Pharaoh should have the fifth part, except in the land of the priests. Huh? Here we go. Only which became not Pharaoh's. And there's your ta tax exempt status. Okay, so. Famine. Great desire for food. My God, we're going to die if you don't give us food, Joseph. Joseph, we're dying. Isn't that interesting? Let's go back to chapter 25, verse 27. 
And this really lights up this passage. 25-27. We see how foolish Esau is. Scripture was scripture. 25-27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Jacob sawed pottage, beans. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red porridge. For I am faint, therefore his name is called Edom. You weren't as starving as the people in Egypt were. And you sold your birthright. Now let me ask you a question. Where did Joseph learn how to do what he was doing, but he learned it from his father? And we only know that he was there to his father about 13 years, four, oh, is he 14 years old. And we see the wisdom of Jacob passed on to, it's almost like, all right, here's, here's our money, what are we gonna do? Well, sell me the birthright. No, give me your cattle. <laughs> We need more. What are we going to do? Give me the birthright. No, give me your lands. That's exactly what Jacob did. But Esau was not that starved. You notice you haven't seen Esau and his family come here yet? You don't mention anywhere Esau or Edom coming for food. Isn't that interesting? All the land of Cana is coming. And we're not finished with the book, the chapter. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen. And they had uh, possessions therein and grew and multiplied exceedingly. In a famine, they're multiplying. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. 37 2, chapter 37, verse 2. I'm in 38. 37.2. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old. Jacob and Joseph 17 years together. Father and son. Before this, this happens. And then he's got a period of time. And we see him 30. 35 years old. His father comes with him. He comes to Egypt. And God gives them another 17 years together. Isn't that interesting? Of all the numbers that God could have gave Jacob, he gives them exactly the same amount before Joseph was sold. There's something in that. What is? I don't know. But there's something about that 17 age. So the whole age of Jacob was 147 years. Ooh, that guy is old. Subtract from that age 16, that's how many years he'd be getting paid for the Social Security system of America. But, and the time drew nigh that Israel must die. All right, now get this, please. This goes with the next chapter and what people say is a problem with the Bible. Let's get this. Ready? The time that Israel must die. He called his son Joseph. And said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. Chapter 24, verse 2. That's what that's what Abraham said to his servant about the vow to go get the bride for Isaac. It's the way they did oaths. The way they made a contract. Today you got people who sign a name and they don't even do it. But pray thee, thy hand under thy thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt. Now Joseph will follow this. He'll tell his brethren, hey, carry my bones out of Egypt. If my dad did not want to be buried in Egypt, you carry me out. Joseph was obedient to his father. Son, go out and see what your sons are doing. Yes, dad. But I will lie with my fathers, 
and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as thou hast said, Joseph said. And he now Joseph is only one in the room. It is Joseph and his father only. Swear unto me, and he sweared unto him, and Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. Now we got there's a problem that people say with this passage. Now, if we go to Hebrews eleven twenty one, this is where supposedly their problem is. And I will explain it to you that it's not a problem. Hebrews eleven twenty one. People are so foolish when it comes to the Bible. This is a problem that, that people are really concerned about. 11.21 and we'll, we'll Verse 20 By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob when he was dying blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipping leaning upon the top of his staff and Genesis says he leaned on the top of his bed head. That's something wrong with the Bible and we, we can't believe it so we got to throw the Bible out. The next chapter, he's with the children of Joseph. But people have a problem with that, what we just read, and, and that right there. They will throw the Bible out because it said bedstead, and it says over here, his staff. But it says the sons of Joseph. Yeah, They're, that's chapter 48. Is that really something stupid? And you might have somebody come up to you and say, well, you know, Jacob leaned upon his bedstead. And he leaned, how did he come lean upon his staff and all that? Let's just say you're stupid you don't read the Bible. You really believe that that's like asses are hot water springs. And well, I told you, only Joseph's there. The boys will come up, Lord willing, tomorrow night. So what a remarkable thing with Joseph. 